Let, let me just ask a very quick question while I process these to, to two of you. Uh, the theme of this is innovation. And um, you, you, you know, we all innovate in our um, careers. And uh, you know, Joe, I think that what you do is, um, you know, my sense is that you consent a lot of these patients in research protocols. And um, uh, you know, Sean mentioned earlier, um, you know, that you you um, started doing superior rectus recessions and inferior oblique myectomy, uh, myectomies. You know, because you felt that the other thing didn't work. Um, my question is, as we, and you know, all of us do things differently um, you know, from how we were trained. Um, my question is, how do you talk to patients when you're doing something for the first time? And because you know, we all encounter this in our practices. Well, well for, that, for that particular procedure where you know, superior rectus recession combined with weakening of the inferior obliques, both of those procedures I've done you know, hundreds of times. And it's in the literature that Ed and, and uh, and Rick Saunders had reported it. So I don't think that is a, a different from the standard of care, and I don't think that requires a separate consent. Uh, and as far as reviewing, we review with the IRB, and that was considered an exempt review. So I, I think we're okay with that. Uh, some, of the other, some of the other procedures, what I'm going to talk about next, uh, definitely requires a, 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 is a little bit more innovative and a little bit more, potentially more bothersome. And so I may answer, answer that at the time I do the next, the next talk. Um, if I can just, I, I'm going to ask one question that came in here. Um, since superior rectus recession and inferior rectus resections both increase extorsion, did you have concerns about creating symptomatic torsion? We certainly did have concerns. And again, we could see up to five degrees of uh, uh, torsion on the photographs or fundus exams. But interestingly, the patients didn't complain very often. We had two patients that complained of torsion, and both of those responded to, um, to torsional surgery. So, <laughs> Again, that was a worry, as was lid position changes, but we just didn't see it. And so we've had very, very good results with that technique. Yeah, and we actually had two of the exact same question, which is, Monty, you showed a table of the vertical Kestenbaum. And the question was, can you put Monty's table up again, just for a second? And uh, you know, in the back, do you mind putting Dr. Del Monte's slides back up, you know, just for a second? And um, one other question in the meantime to both of you. Do you ever see induced vertical strabismus after bilateral vertical r and -Rs? My, my series didn't have it. Uh, we, we did have some that, again, they tended to be transient, uh, and they were relatively small amounts. Um, so, again, that it, it wasn't a problem. That some of the strabismus, most of the strabismus that we had, the three cases that we had that developed strabismus after a year, following surgery, they were horizontal problems mostly. I don't remember uh, them being V pattern or A pattern, but uh, just regular garden variety esotropia or exotropia. And, um, I'll just ask one last question. When you do these large vertical r &Rs, how do you explain that the lid position doesn't change? Well, well again, I think, uh, and we found this with, with thyroid and with uh, other sorts of things, that, again, the key, the most important thing is to clean the intermuscular septum all the way back to the pulley. And you can see the pulleys when you do these. So we're cleaning at least 15, 17 millimeters, and then you take all the, the, the tenons and adhesions from the surface of the muscle, the ventral surface uh, of the inferior rectus and the dorsal surface of the superior rectus. And we just don't see that. Um, and for DVD, I do large recessions as well, up to 10 millimeters. And uh, we don't see lid position. I think that's the key. I, I've seen it in a couple, um, and it's transient. But I always warn the parents, especially if you're doing a large superior rectus recession, because now the chin's in the opposite direction and the lids are up, and they get really bothered by More that possible, unless yeah. you tell them. So I always did, inform yeah. them of that as well. We did see it for up to three, uh, three months, and again, we warned the patients to. But it, it goes may away. take a while to resolve. It but. goes away.